this is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by the co-founders of the new sports management group, ISG, Darren Barker and Joe Calzaghi, both former world champions, of course. I think I looked earlier, combined record of 76 and two. Sorry, I Joe. Thought, that, I, that, I, that's I, not I, me too, mate. I'm not taking <laughs> anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm messing up this. No, no oh, more wide sorry. records. <laughs> oh, sorry, Joe. <laughs> yeah. we, we won't talk about how they're split, but you might have got an idea <laughs> from Joe's reaction just there. But yeah, ISG, guys, f- first of all, you know, start from the start. How did it all come about? You guys were obviously friends for a long time. How did you decide to take this route? Carl, we, me and Joe must have had this conversation a good few years ago and probably more... Uh, serious a couple of years ago and then obviously Joe's been through a lot uh, as of late and um, he's got to a point now where it, the timing's right we just we, we look we we love boxing like I, I'm present at most of the shows week in week out Joe keeps a keen eye on it and like we just love the sport and uh, though we've got no intentions of getting back in the ring we miss the buzz we miss the journey we miss be you know following that buzz and um there's no better way. Look, we we I think we kind of both dabbled with training a little bit, and it's not really for us. Uh, on my part, uh, my body <laughs> smashed to pieces. I can't even hold the pads or do anything. So uh, now, you know, what's what's the next way? And like I say, though I'm sat ringside, I'm doing a commentary which I love. Just miss that journey, and I just feel that me and Joe spoke. We just got everything there to help these young. Uh, aspiring champions fulfill their dreams and that's go I mean it stems from every part of the business and uh, we're backed we've got um, uh, a backer David Rockwell he's a he's a billionaire property uh, tycoon in, in Australia and the reason we brought him on board was because he can help us uh, in so many other ways you know he opens so many different avenues yeah. to help protect the fighters give them different outlooks where they've got potential to to invest their money into different things and he's got every single uh sort of requirement needed for for someone to be looked after so they can just uh, concentrate on their boxing we've got everything there is now uh, for a fighter to go on and fulfill their dreams and I just feel me and Joe um are going to really going to you know give it our heart and soul and and yeah. as far as you know helping these fighters are concerned give them everything and try and give back to the sport as well we're going to give some money to the British Boxing Board of Control charity which is important to us because we want to give back um you know this is you know obviously a business and we're going to work hard for these fighters but we also want to give back to the sport and I think the British Boxing Board of Control do a brilliant job with the, their charity and we want to give a percentage of each purse to them. I know there's some good charities out there. I think the Ringside Charitable Trust. Uh, I just think the more the merrier because me and Joe, we've been there, we've done it. We've, you know, we've come out of the sport and there was tough times for both of us. And I think uh, a lot of fighters who, you know, I, I always say this and every time I do an interview with Joe, like I don't have the same profile as Joe, but, uh, you know, when there's fighters that didn't have the sort of profile as us that kind of get forgotten a little bit. And with these charities... They, 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 you know, they, they're going to help them in their, in their lives, and that's so important because fighters are warriors. Fighters give it everything in the ring, and it's important that you know there's people, you know, like myself and Joe have been there, done it. I think we have a responsibility to help those, and I hope we we set a bit of a trend and get others to follow. And yeah. Joe Darren said there that you, you've been for a lot in recent times. Just just touch on that if you don't mind, and how that's kind of led you to to where you are now with ISG. Yeah, well, obviously, you know, obviously, um, <sighs> since I retired from boxing in two thousand nine. Sorry, let me get this pop up out of the way. Sorry, so I can see it. And um, yeah, it's um, obviously you know, the sport of boxing. Retired in two thousand nine. I dabbled bits and pieces in boxing, but. You know, my dad started becoming ill, and I don't, you know, I need to explain. Obviously, he my father, my trainer, and um, it had a tough few years, and so everything was stop start with myself. And um, when I was speaking with Darren, we mentioned this a few years ago that there's nothing really for to protect the boxer like what we offer. You know, it's just because I, I essentially sort of manage my own career for a lot of the time. So I've been, we've been in the business side and also the boxing side. So our knowledge of boxing is top compared to other people and the managers, and also. 
I know all what it takes to become a champion and, and what to avoid, you know, and what needs to be to help a fighter coming through. Like when I start my turn pro, I had no legal advice. I used to start making different tiny laws for 300 pounds a week. And it was a loan. And 20 grand later, a uh, young boxer of the year, 21 wins, 20 KOs and British champion. And I couldn't afford my mortgage. Now them things, luckily for me, I had my father and I know I, I, uh, the ability to be able to still go through that but a lot of fighters would have got a day job you know i need to get, make some money some income for my family so that then they take their mind off the box and that's when talented young boxers you know can get beat because it's all on that one night you know they used to call me sick no i think i pulled out about 10 fights now i didn't pull out 10 fights i mean i lost the fight so it's all about and i was managing myself i was listening to myself you know I, if i was listening to promoters to fight that fight because they've sold all the tickets and i was i broke my hand i wouldn't be undefeated world super world champion you know so that, that was one of the things i listened to myself in the past that education on to young fighters coming through and i think obviously with my contacts obviously darren is is amazing contacts we've got everything covered i think we got everything covered to to be a big success and to help fighters we sign you know fulfill fulfilling their dream on, on being the best they can be and we look after the rest regarding all the outside things you know the management, the sponsorship, obviously matchmaking. They are the things that we will do naturally. And I'm excited. Time is everything. And like I said, we had a few years. 2022, I'm glad me and my mate, good friend Darren have started this company. I'm really I'm excited for it. To, uh, to the point, I'm actually going to be going to fly to America probably in a few weeks to go and see our new fighter. When you look at the fact I never fly, you know, I think I should have <laughs> dedication. <laughs> Uh, this is a hot beach. Dedication to so what we want to do. You know, we want to take this seriously. I was, uh, I always said when I come back to boxing, I will be taken seriously. You know, I was, I was taken seriously as a boxer, and nothing is different to what me and Darren were going to do as managing. We have the same mindset and being a success and being number one, and that's what we're trying to do. And Joe, your dad was obviously incredibly proud of everything you achieved in the ring. He was a huge part of it. How do you think he'd feel about this latest um, chapter in terms of helping young fighters? Yeah, my dad would be loving it. He'd be really excited, of course. You know, it's, it's what we did. It's what made us, it made the name, made, made us who we are. You know, all my dad would be saying is uh, bring him to the gym. I see what they got. And I, I put him on the steps and he, he'll break most of them. I remember Derek Chisora was crying his eyes out one day coming out of the gym. You think you come down one day and you never come down again. That's what we used to do. We used to come down and see the champions from the challengers, right? And you break up. So that's what he would be saying, but maybe we will do that. Maybe, you know, eventually we can bring fighters in, train at the gym. You know, there's loads of options we've got here as well, you know, going forward. I'm glad, I'm, glad I've got, I'm glad I've got bad hips because I ain't going on many steps. <laughs> oh, brilliant. I, re I remember walking up them the only time I visited. There was no chance I was ever going to run up them. Yeah. <laughs> Darren, give us an idea of um, who you guys are working with already but in terms of new fighters on the team, what, what sort of characteristics will you be looking for? Well, first and foremost, I, I look, it's got to fit. We're, we're not out there to go and uh, uh, sort of saturate the, the company with loads of talent. I, I think the narrative is important. The personality is important. Uh, it's got to gel. We're, we're, though we're backed, uh, we're, we're not under any rush. We're, we're, I think we're going to take this slow and we're going to, sort of find our feet and make sure we get the right personnel, uh, not just fighter, but the, the staff. Though we've got David Rothwell and all his connections, um, we, we still want to get everything perfect because uh, a fighter deserves that. So, yeah, we're in no major rush to go out signing loads of fighters, but we'll keep a key eye, uh, keen eye on, on some of the talent coming through, uh, through the, the amateur scene. Obviously, I'm connected to the Repton Boxing Club. It'd be lovely to get a, a fight from there, um, and you know we'll 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 keep a key, keen eye uh, on fighters and help them develop when the time's right. Uh, the the fighter that we do have, I'm I'm extremely excited about. Um, I got in contact with his kids. I see him knock out this guy in the the uh, U.S. National Championships, uh, where he's won 14 of them. Uh, his record's 137 wins, nine losses. He's got about 30 knockouts. Uh, and we're talking about uh, a bantam, super bantam featherweight. He'll, he'll campaign around that, could go up to light, even light welterweight. Jesus Pantiera Martinez. I mean, I spoke to this guy and his dad, and that was the instant connection I had with him when I had the conversation on Zoom, is his dad trains in the lovely people 
um, really, really good people, down to earth people. And I thought, look, Joe and Enzo, and it just that that part made sense. And when I listened to him and I spoke to him, he's only seventeen. I said, you know, why why do you want to turn pro now? What, what, what's the rush? And he said, look, Mr. Barker, uh, about one hundred thirty. Uh, plus five, 140 plus fights um, I've won more than I ever dreamt I would I've never ever had dreams of going to the Olympics or even representing America I, it doesn't bother me my dream is not to win one world title it's to win multiple world titles and he looked at me stone faced it wasn't like a blag it wasn't um, you know facade it wasn't he genuine believes and he won't be content unless he wins multiple world titles and uh I've seen him train. We're going out, like Joe said, we're going out to Texas to see him soon. And I'm extremely excited about this young kid. I think uh, we've got a superstar on our hands. I really do. I think he's a great personality, really, really nice, down-to-earth kid. But when that bell goes, he's fierce, fierce. You know, you don't see kids knocking other kids out with, you know, the 12-ounce gloves or whatever they've got on. I think he said over there with the head guards on. You know, he's been knocking kids out since he was 12. He's just a beast. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing him make, make his debut in April. And, yeah, we'll just uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye out for, for, for the next people. You know, not necessarily stars. We want people that are going to be dedicated, going to give us everything, because we're going to give them everything. And we just want to help. This is it, basically. We want to help fighters fulfil their dreams and make as much money as possible. We want to see them sail off into the sunset one day when they've retired with multiple world titles, big ass, and, uh, you know, then we've done our job correctly. Yeah. Now, Joe, talking of negotiation, you were known as being a pretty tough negotiator in your day, obviously negotiating for yourself at the time. How much are you relishing kind of going nose to nose with some of the top promoters that are negotiating on your fighters' behalf? Yeah, it would be a completely different mindset, obviously, to, to negotiate for fights myself, you know, but I would be treating my, obviously, our fighters like it was me, how I would treat myself, and, and that's it, really, you know. So my knowledge, our knowledge... You know, I'd be looking forward to uh, <laughs> sitting down. And, and the great thing is, is uh, we can speak to anyone. You know, at the minute I've got good relations. Um, obviously, Darren's got a good relationship with Matchroom. So, you know, we, we just we just have to sit down and see what's best for the fighter and, and for us, obviously. But, yeah, that would be, that'll be good fun. <laughs> that, Darren, what will success look like for you guys in one or two years' time? Where, will you, where would you like to be down the road? Like I say, uh, a couple of... Well, I mean, two years. Remember, this is a work in progress. This is a long-term project. But ultimately, this is this is look, me and Joe have done right at the sport. But this this is a this is about the journey that it's going to give us and and it's going to take us. And uh, for success for us, without a shadow of a doubt, is seeing young fighters on their way to to winning titles and earning lots of money because it, it this is the hardest sport in the world. Um, and, I, and I've said this in numerous interviews you know boxing that there, there's lots and lots of really really good people i've met friends for life and i know there's people you know that i can i can trust with everything in boxing but i'd be lying to you if i was to say that there isn't you know there's some people out there that you know i don't think give a toss about fighters etc and that worries me because it's it, you know this is not a sport to be where you should be taken advantage of. And that's another thing for me and Joe is to protect as many fighters as we can. Like I say, we're not looking to over oversaturate the company with fighters, but if a fighter comes to us and they're struggling and they need help, well then we'll be the first to sort of hand out, you know, put our hand out and help them because it's just so hard. It's so hard. And it's important for us as former fighters who have been punched in the face, you know, suffered all the highs and all the lows. It's important for us that we give back and, um, you know, in that sense, personally, we're going to do that as a business. We're going to do that as a charity. We're going to do that. So I feel like we've got everything there to, to be a good, uh, respectful um, company within the sport. Well, I wish you both, obviously, the, the very best of luck. Now, Thank you. it's not often we get the chance to speak to two such legends of the British game at the same time. Not, so I'm not a legend. No, no one calls me a legend. <laughs> well, I just have. I'm happy to be a yeah, pioneer mate. in that regard. Um, but I want to ask you both about some of the stars around today in your respective weight classes while I've got the chance. Joe, I'm going to start with you. Canelo, Andre Ward, 
super middleweight, who wins? Oh, I'm, I'm not surprised. Did you, know, you, you stick me in there then? No, I will. You know, the I'm, I'm, I'm building up today, right? <laughs> now, look at them two. Actually, you know, I think Andre Ward have a great chance in that fight. At middle, at super middleweight, because I just, you know, obviously he's a great fighter, Canelo, but I wouldn't say he's a great super middleweight. You know, I think when you saw his last fight against Plant, if I fought Plant or if some Andrew Ward fought Plant, I think we'd done a much better job than Canelo did, which was quite a close fight. So I look at Canelo and I think it's a fight I'd love to have had. And um, I think if I had to pick, I'd probably pick Ward to end and, that uh, one. And out of the two, oh, you predicted I was going to ask, out of the two, which one gives you the tougher challenge? The tougher challenge, ooh, that's a tough one, man. They're both, uh, both great fighters. Um, I think I think I prefer to fight Canelo. I mean, because Andre Ward just sits back and you know he's, he's his styles make fights. And with Andre Ward, he's got the style I don't like. I'm not saying I don't think I would beat him, but I just don't think it would be aesthetically as pleasing a fight to watch as it would be against a Canelo. It would be a tear up. But with Andre Ward, it'd be a lot probably holding and a lot of shoulders and very tactical fight. I think with Andre Ward, both great fighters, of course, and both very tough fights. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, that's one thing you and Cole Froch agree on. You don't like Andre Ward's style particularly. Well, I mean, listen, he's under, I don't know, and he's undefeated. He's a great fighter. And he, listen, he's undefeated. What can you say? Yeah, I'm not putting the guy down when all I'm saying, I will fight together. Maybe wouldn't be the best blend of styles, you know, because he's a very clever fighter. And I, I think he knows that I, I like the counter punch. So it may be a bit of that waiting game with him. A lot of thing, you know, maybe a lot of uh, a bit of a chess match in that, in that fight. But listen, you know, both uh, tremendous fighters. Two greats. Now, Darren, there's a big all-British uh, middleweight fight coming up with world-level implications between Chris Eubank Jr. and, of course, Liam Williams. How do you kind of weigh that one up? I think it's 50-50. I really do. Um, oh, do you know what? I don't know. I don't know. I, it, size worries me about Williams a little bit. He's not naturally a middleweight, is he? And uh, we've seen Eubank as campaigned up at super middleweight. Uh, I, I think size could be the difference. I think Eubank could be a little bit too busy for Williams, but I wouldn't rule, rule Williams out. He, he's a very good fighter, but I just think size and, and, and volume of punches could be the difference in that one. And someone that works with the trainer you had for your career, Tony Sims, is, of course, Felix Cash, former undefeated British champion at the weight. How do you think he gets on in that mix with the likes of Eubank and Williams? I think he beats both of them. I, th I think Felix is a very, very good good fighter. If, uh, you know, he, he, when, when Felix is on it, he's a very, very tough man to beat. Uh, I'm a big fan of his. I'm a big fan of Tony. Tony's a tremendous coach uh, who... who always comes up with a tremendous game plan, always gets his fighters in tremendous shape. And I just feel um, he's got a very, very good career in front of him, Felix. He's already done so well. He had a little bit of a break for personal reasons, but I think he's really going to kick on now and, and really turn some heads. Great stuff. Joe, Darren, really appreciate your time. Very best of luck with the new venture. And uh, I'm sure we'll be talking a lot more often.